there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another delicious list, and today I'm very excited to be talking about my top 64 worker placement games. Now, the worker placement genre is one of my favorite genres of games, uh, probably has a, a good chunk of my top 100 games, and how I compiled this list of my top 64 was I went through every single game that is a worker placement game, at least according to Board Game Geek. This ended up being 2,693 games, aka 108 pages I scrolled through and I saved a picture of every single game that I had played and now I'm going to rank them. And the first thing I want to mention is yes, I've played every single one of those games and I've played them 17 times. I am an expert. No. <laughs> These are just the 64 worker placement games that I have played and I'm going to be ranking them and you'll figure out which one my favorite is. Now, also, I do want to mention that if I miss some, that's going to happen, because as I went through the list, I noticed that there were some missing. In fact, I cheated. There's actually 66 games here. Ha <laughs> ha! Because I added Charterstone in one other game. Because for some reason, on Board Game Geek, it wasn't listed as a worker placement game. So now let's just grab one, move it up here, and let's get moving. And the first thing we're going to do is Kingsburg. We'll start off with a real good one. And I have Kingsburg 2nd Edition. Wholeheartedly rec recommend the 2nd Edition, because it includes all the expansion content. And this is one of my favorite games of all time. This is one of the games that got me into the hobby, and, and Kingsburg, if you've never played it, is a spectacular dice placement game. I cannot recommend it enough, and it actually, I think, is my favorite dice placement game of all time uh, with the expansions, because it just allows you to customize your city in a whole variety of different ways, and it's really, really cool. Next, we have Outlive, and this is a good time to tell you about the different categories. So we have my favorites, which will be up at the top. We have the good category, and I'll tell you why they're good. We have the forgettable good, which says, hey, this is good, but I, I don't remember that much about it, and I eventually got rid of it. And then we have the forgettable meh, which is, oh, I don't remember much about the game, but I remember it wasn't the best. And then we have the bad, and I don't know how many bad are going to be down there, because overall, I tend to like most worker placement games, I say, uh, that I enjoy, and Outlive is going to go eh, barely in the good. It's close to the forgettable good, but it was in the good. It had this really unique system that I don't remember, to be quite honest with you. It was one of those games that I got in Essen, and then it got another release later on in America, but it wasn't as big, and it just kind of, it just, you know, it was one of those games that kind of died with time. And there's so many of those games but i think it's still a good game it, you know what no we're gonna be honest it's forgettable good but it's towards the top of forgettable good dang it uh next we have galactic uh oh my gosh galash oh god galactin rebellion this is uh, a gigantic box i can't even i can't even stress how big this box is i could go get it back there it's like this big it is a humongous ungodly gigantic space game that is really fascinating up until the last 15% of it, in which case it absolutely just poops the bed and becomes a terrible game, and the ending was just so ungodly bad. And I don't remember how bad it is. I burned that hole out of my memory, but it was bad. The ending to the game completely ruined it, and uh, yeah, that is one that, ooh, I was so excited because the box was so big, and I love, you know, space epic meaty games, and this was just incredibly disappointing. Uh, Galactic Rebellion, I think it is. Uh, Vikings on Board! This is a really interesting one. This was a Gen Con release a couple of years ago from Blue Orange Game. And it was a mean game. Because Blue Orange Games, every once in a while, uh, well, now they do a lot more. But they used to pump out kind of strategy games. They had, uh, what is it, New York 1901, which is a really enjoyable game. And then this, which was a super-duper mean game about, like, knocking people off a... Uh, it was good. It was good. If you like mean games. But it was forgettable. Uh, it, it was just too mean for my taste. Honestly, I think a lot of people would have it more in the good category if you like mean games. But for me personally, uh, it was one that I know that I was never going to get to play with my wife because she does not like being means in games. And so eventually it just went out of my collection. Actually, you know what? I take that back. I think it's in the kill closet because I didn't think they gave me a copy of the rules because it was a Gen Con release. Odd. Uh, Rise of Queensdale, right up to the top. One of my favorite games of all time. We're going to slap that right in front of Kingsburg. And there's your early contender for my number one. Uh, Rise of Queensdale is, in my personal opinion, the best legacy game that I have played, and it's not even close. It is a dice placement game. The story is good enough. It had me interested. It had me intrigued. It had me wanting to play every single game to see what was going to happen. But the big star of the show was the fact that you got dice, and then you got to put stickers on the dice, and the stickers on the dice made the game so much fun. And there were stickers upon stickers, and it came in a big box, and it was a blast. Go check out me and uh, Adam's uh, review on it. Happy Saturday. Good to see you, Van. Uh, so we have Rise of Queensdale, my early number one. Next we have, let's grab, 
Biotics. This is from Smirk and Dagger Games. This is a really small box game. It's like about in this size. And I remember it being, it was good. But unfortunately, uh, it, it, it was on the lighter side. It was maybe 20 to 30 minutes. And it was just one that I, I didn't see getting to the table too often. I actually can see it right now. I still own it because I remember being it that good. And maybe I need to get that one out with Sean. But unfortunately, I'm putting it in the forgettable good category. But if you can find that one, uh, check that one out. It's actually kind of a fun game. Uh, so now do we, no, oh yeah, uh, City of the Big Shoulders. This is one that's going to be very divisive. It is a very meaty game. Some people had a lot of issues with the rule booklet, but for me personally, I love this game. It's a, uh, it's a stock market kind of manipulation game where you're going to be investing in these companies and, and it has this really, really cool worker placement thing where, uh, in your factories, you're eventually going to be able to get automation and the automation will let you do some different things. It has a lot of really cool ideas and, and it's a, it's one of my favorite worker placement games for now. I can see it eventually getting bumped down to the good to great category where I just wouldn't get it played as much just because it is such a beast and you really have to be in the mood to play the kind of game but it's one i don't think i'm ever gonna get well i, I don't know i really 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 enjoy the game but it's really hard to get to the table speaking of which let's just throw up king's abbey because that's gonna fall in the very same category so king's abbey is this really cool game that i have completely forgotten about because it came out like four years ago uh it was from breaking games it was a really rock solid game and i remember talking uh, with someone from the company. I don't know if this is like insider baseball, so I shouldn't mention the name, but someone from the company. And they told me that that was like their first breaking games, first like real hobby game, because uh, someone in the company was like, we should move more into the hobby games because they used to be just like into the party games and the stuff like that. And now they they moved into that and that was their first game. And it was just at a weird time in breaking games uh, life. And they didn't market potentially the, the way they should have. They said, uh, and unfortunately it did not get the buzz it deserved because it was a really, really good game that I don't remember, but I still have one that I do remember. And one that is dang underrated is worker placement and worker placement. Uh, yes, that is actually the name of the game is a, uh, from Daiskami publishing. It is a really light simple worker placement game obviously uh where where it's about you placing workers for as a temp agency and it was a good game and i still have not i actually plan on playing it with my son tomorrow that was the plan uh i don't think it's great but i think as a gateway to the worker placement genre maybe like a step slight step above gateway definitely check out worker placement uh and get the cash is king expansion the cash is king expansion i if i recall correctly is pretty good next we have everdell Big one, Starling Games. Does it go into my favorites? I really enjoy the game. I've played the game now, I think, three times. First time, I wasn't so hot. Second time, I was like, ooh, I see why people like this. Third time, I was like, ooh, this is, this is pretty dang good. I think I'm going to keep this. I don't want the expansions. But I don't think it's quite in my favorites category. I think it's probably going to be top near the top of the good. Uh, I need to play it a little bit more, and I need to see some of the expansion content for me personally. But still, a very good game. One that does jump from the good to the great is... Uh, Dinosaur Island from Pandasaurus Games. I love this game. I think it's great, and I like it better than City of the Big Shoulders. And this is one that also I'm really excited to explore the expansion content because I have not got to see the expansion content. I think I've played this four times, and every single time I have just thoroughly enjoyed it. You're running your own dinosaur park. You've got your scientists doing sciencey thing. You've got your workers doing worker things, and uh, you know it has really cool. There's a lot of different mechanisms going on, but the way they present everything on the board makes it a smooth, seamless game with different phases. One I really enjoy a lot, uh, and I haven't tried it, Dinosaur World, or Dinosaur Island, I think that's the name of it. I need to mess with these so I can read them better. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I can. Cool. All right, so next we have Trickerian. Trickerian. Three times I've played Trickerian. Every single time I've had a, a, a not the best experience. Trikerian is a game to me that I need to play it with other people like me. And when I say that, I mean other people who do not tend to get much analysis paralysis. Because Trikerion can take an ungodly amount of time. But I still like it. I still think it's good and I think it's ambitious. It just wasn't what I wanted it to be. And I don't think it was what a lot of people wanted to be good. But, and honestly, uh, I might put it down here, but Trikerion is just such a unique beast of a game that I, I remember it. So it's not forgettable good. Definitely in the good category. Not much meh yet. Let's go grab a meh. I'm going to grab a meh. Ooh, skip that. We're not going meh. We're going... Yeah, we're going to meh. 
I'm not going to go with bad on Caro because honestly, I don't remember if I just like, I remember I played it and I was like, meh. Yeah, yeah, and I don't remember much about it. So it was this two-player game. The, the main thing I remember about this is that it had this really cool gas tanker component, which was like the first player marker. But other than that, it was like a post-apocalyptic, and you got to get gas, and it was it was eh, it wasn't great. <laughs> uh, so what do we got next? Feudalia. This one. This one. This game. I tell you what, this game flies under the radar. This is a really unique game. This is a worker placement. Uh, but it's also a deck building game, and it goes hard on the deck building. And it is, it, it's it's a great game, but it's not one of my favorites. I think it it, it kind of has the city of the big shoulders syndrome, where I know when I get it out, I'm gonna have to go through a boatload of rules. And I think I'd rather play city of the big shoulders. So I'm gonna put it over here. And this is where it gets interesting because I know I can get Everdale out. I know I can do five ten minutes on the rules. I got Everdale set up. Whereas this game. This is going to be 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to have to read the rules before I get it. But I still think it's a better game. So I'm going to slot Feudalia above Everdell. Check that one out. I tell you what, if you like meatier, heavier, uh, really interesting games, and you like deck building and worker placement, check out Feudalia. Really rock solid game. Charterstone. Also not listed as a worker placement game on Board Game Geek, but if I recall correctly, it should be. And I say if I recall correctly, I really should know. Because I played 24 games of Charterstone. 25 games of Charterstone. Because I played through two separate campaigns of it. And then we played one game afterwards. So I really should know if it's worker placement. I'm like 90% sure it's worker placement. And I think it's good. I think it's good. I had high, high hopes for this one. I was drinking the Jamie Stagmire Kool-Aid. And I actually rated it as one of my uh, favorite games. I, I predicted it was going to be the top game of the year. It was not. For me or for a lot of people. Uh, it kind of got a little bit... My main issue with it was, it, I felt like it had a little bit of a runaway leader problem. And it, eh, I, don't, I don't know. But I still had a really good time with it. I did. And if I could play a game 24 times, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. 25. Yokohama. A game I own. A game I know is great. I played it twice. I liked it both times. I said, dang, this game's great twice. But at the same time, it doesn't get played. It does not. It sits there, and I know it's a masterpiece, and I know it's a great game. I know it's well-designed, but it doesn't get played. So where do I put it? That's the question. Why doesn't it get played? Well, there's there's a thing. So I'm going to put Yokohama. Yeah, <laughs> right there. I'm going to put it on a work placement. Because I don't feel like that's fair, because I feel like Yokohama is such a better game than Trakirian. But you know what? It's my list. I'm going to do what I want. All right, so next we got Under Falling Skies. This is the new solo one from CGE, and I'm glad I zoomed in. Really glad I did that. This is a very good game. I'd say it's a great game. I would. It's a great solo experience, and it's one I absolutely recommend purchasing if you are fine with the fact that the story is bogus. The story is there, and it's meh. And what, what they, met it, they made it a very meh story so they could make tons and tons of variability, and when you, and when you have like a very structured story it's hard to get more variability at least i would imagine it is and while i am going to put it great you know what we're going to be real we're going to be real i'm going to slide into the good because you know what i'm not going to get it played for a while you know what no it's great no i'm going to go good i'm going to go top of good <sighs> feel bad about that title blades this one's a unique one i've only played it once played it once you say you make an opinion after one time. So that's why I'm not going to... So this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to put it on here. Because I thought it was really good. I did. I thought it was really good. And I think it was borderline great. It had a lot of really cool mechanisms. It's about... You're fighting. And you're running around. You're trying to collect things. And there's a turtle. you got to make the turtle happy. It's, it's a weird game. <laughs> it's a weird game. It's got gorgeous miniatures. Just massively, massively, massively overproduced. Humongous box. When I got there, it was completely set up. And I was like, wow, what is this beast and behemoth? So many part, moving parts. So many moving mechanisms. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize that if I own that game, and I don't, my buddy Brandon does, I just wouldn't get it to the table. Because while it was very good, to borderline great, it's just in this feudality, feudalia thing where it's like, I'm not going to want to... I'm not going to want to do that. I'm not going to want to get it out. So I'm going to put it there. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You got to go here. You got to go here. <laughs> Yokohama is way better than Title Blades. Uh, in my personal opinion. So let's not go buck wild there. Man. <laughs> okay. So what do we got next? 
A Song of Fire and Ice. This is another one. Put a caveat on it. I played it twice. I guess that's enough. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was my favorite skirmish miniatures game I've ever played. Ever! Now, that being said, I'm not a huge skirmish miniature person, but I've played, you know, probably five, ten games where it's just like whole boatloads of miniatures moving around the board, that sort of thing. Maybe even more. Uh, and this one was my favorite. And the worker placement aspect, it didn't feel like a worker placement game, but I think it's uh, because there was like character slots, you could put different cards or different things, they do different cool stuff. But it, it was very thematic, very cool, and quite honestly, you know, despite the fact I don't own it, see, I needed a great category, because it's not one of my favorites, so I'm going to put it at the very top of good. Because I would, honestly, if I had a friend who had Song of Ice, Ice and Fire, and they were like, yeah, I want to play this, I got all the stuff, I'd be like, oh my gosh, yeah, let us jam on that. And I would rather play this than every other game on the list right there. I think that's the most important part. If, so, if my buddy called me up and said, we got the whole day, I want to play one of these games, which one do you want to make sure you get? I'm going to say Song of Ice and Fire. So there you go. List is going good. Next we got Dawn of Mankind. Play this one twice. Played it once before it was released. Ooh la la. Uh, it's good. It's it's not for me. I remember you, you're you going along like this uh, this board. You start on this side and you go that way. And it's really kind of cool because it's like it changes throughout history and it's got some cool mechanisms. And I'm going to slide it in here between Yokohama and Tidal Blades. Because Yokohama's like, hey, I'm way better than Tidal Blades. Put some stuff between us. I'm like, okay, I'll put Dawn of Mankind. Is that fair? And Yokohama says, that's fine. I need more. Okay. I'm weird. This one. Yeah. What What the heck is this? What is this, Board Game Geek? So this is uh, Valley of the Vikings. This was the Spiel des Jahres, uh, the Kinder Spiel des Jahres, from, I think, two years ago, from Haba Games. And it's this really interesting little bowling game where you got, like, this, uh, this big piece of cardboard thing and you bam and you hit this ball and then you try and knock over people's pins and when you knock over the pins they they move along this thing and then when someone finally boom falls into the pier you steal coins from other people and it's a good family game when i first got into it, i thought it was a great family game i've played it since now about six or seven times and it just it doesn't have as much legs as i'd want and that's unfortunately uh what can happen with a lot of those haba like really really cool gimmick games so this is still good and you know what i will i'll put it right in here i would rather play this than Dawn of Mankind, but not better than Yokohama. <laughs> I love having children's games and lists like this. It just throws everything into confusion. Speaking of which, nothing. That, that was a terrible segue. Uh, we're going to go with Fear of Bend. 2020 release. So it's hot, fresh in my mind. And I think it's one of my favorites right now. And mechanism-wise, gameplay-wise... I don't think it's one of my favorites, but I enjoy the theme so much. I'm going to put it right there for now. Uh, so it's called uh, Finishing Time, I think, or Working Time or something, the English title of it. It's Friedman Freeze, who developed uh, Power Grid and Fearsome Floors. And it's a really interesting game where you play as a worker and you are trying to improve your working conditions and get uh, less, less, uh, more time PTO and equal pay and all sorts of different stuff like that. And it's a really well-designed game. You can get a boyfriend or a girlfriend, go to a hotel and make love to get your, your stress down. You can go bicycling. and It's just a weird Freeman Freeze game, but it's a really enjoyable one. And I enjoy the solo variant of it a good deal. And uh, if anyone has any of these in particular that had a spectacular solo variant, please let me know. Because I just got into solo games, you know, maybe like a year or two ago that I really started to get into them. And if some of these older games that I have have that on there, I'd be very excited to know. So next we go Barbarian, which I think is a good dice placement game that nobody talks about. I really need a good, great section. Uh, but it's a, a dice placement game. It came out a couple years ago from a company that you wouldn't expect it to come out from who did, uh, not Zombicide, but the others, uh, Zpocalypse. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name. But yeah, it's a good. It's good. And honestly, I would rather play it than... But I'd rather play it more than Yokohama. Okay, is this going to work? Get over it. You know what? Yokohama says no. But it, it's close. Um, next, we have Red Outpost. This is a new one. Uh, it might not actually be out yet. I don't know if this is out. It just came out a couple months ago. Or it's going to be coming out very, very soon. This is a really intriguing worker placement game. And I don't remember the name of the company because it's a new company. It's a spinoff from Mayday Games. 
And uh, I guess I'm going to have to put it in the forgettable good category because I don't remember what the cool thing was about it. I think it's slated it right here under Biotics because I did enjoy it. I do enjoy remember enjoying it. And I actually remember I did the Kickstarter video for it. And I said, uh, I, I kind of wish there was a cooperative version of the game. And they actually ended up adding a cooperative version of the game. Look at me. I feel like Richard. <laughs> Rod, no. Because a lot of times when you make suggestions, people add it to the game. But uh, what was the shtick? The thing was, like, your workers were all... It was like your workers were pooled together or something like that. There was some sort of shtick, gimmick, where you all had to share a, a common resource. And it was cool. It was cool. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was great. But I would like to try the solo version of that. Uh, the cooperative. Ooh, we don't have enough in the bad. Let's go with... Ah, uh, but it's not fair. Was it bad or was it meh? <clears throat> so I have this rule on my channel. You never see my channel. You should totally subscribe. Uh, but... If you ever see a preview from me, whatever says P-R-E-V-I-E-W, that generally means that I wasn't the biggest fan of a Kickstarter game. And I always say that to everybody. I say that to everybody. I try and mention it. I probably said that a thousand times on my YouTube channel just because I want to be honest. When I do a review, I will mention the pros and I will mention the cons all the time. But I wanted to do a preview, and this is one that got a preview. I don't remember why it got a preview, but that means that there was enough bad things that I was like, you know what, they probably would not want me to make an honest review and put it on their Kickstarter page. So I'm going to go with the forgettable meh. You know what, we're going to be mean. We're going to go, we're going to go, no, I'm going to go with forgettable meh. Because I don't remember it. I don't remember if it was bad, or maybe there was just too many cons. Who knows? Alien Frontiers, let's talk about some good. Let's talk about some good. Let's talk about my favorites. Yeah, I love Alien Frontiers, and like... Uh, like Dinosaur Island, it's one that I've never played any of the expansions, and I'm very excited to explore those expansions. This is a really cool space dice placement game. Uh, I think at some point, if I had the expansions, I played the expansions, it could climb all the way above Kingsburg. That's how much I enjoy the game. And I gotta remember to drink this water. But it's, a, it's an older one that you might be able to get on the cheap. <clears throat> Mintworks. Really cool game from Poquito or Poketo. The only reason I know that is because I did a Kickstarter critique for him a couple weeks ago for another Mint game, which was not on Board Game Geek! Put it on Board Game Geek! Come on! And it was good. I enjoyed this game a good, good deal. If I owned it, it might be in my favorites. My buddy Brandon owns it. But I've played this now, I think, three times, and every time I have enjoyed the heck out of it. It does not outstay its welcome. And I'm not going to go favorites. That's nuts. I'm going to go good. And... I'm, I am factoring in the portability of this game because that always appeals to me. I love the fact that this comes in a mint tin. Deal with it. <laughs> Somebody's like, what the hell? <laughs> All right, uh, what do we got next? Stone Age, classic. As far as I know, one of the first worker placement games, he said, predictingly, hopefully, I think it's in like the top... It came out a long time ago. It came out in like the early 2000s or 90s or something like that. Like that. And it's a, it still stands the test of time. I actually got a chance to play this about a month and a half ago. It is still a great game. And it's one of my favorites. <clears throat> I, I just love the theme. I love how simple it is. I think the expansion is a great expansion. And the fact that it's still one of my favorites, I think, you know... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it here in front of Fiera Ben just because of the fact that it has stood the test of time and I don't know if Fiera Ben will. That's what I. That's why I always like kind of bank on a lot of these older games. Like the fact that Kingsburg is still here. I am doing well, Vala. Thank you. I hope you're doing as well as well. One game that is not doing well is Ticket to Mars, which will go straight into the bad category. <laughs> um, now it is forgettable. I've burned it out of my brain and... I would have to go back and watch my review as to why I really did not enjoy the game. But that was a uh, that was a company. They gave me some games at Essen. One of them was okay. And then I got to this one, and it was just, it was so bad. And I don't remember what was so bad of it. But it, it was just, you were trying to get your people on Mars. And it really made me mad. So please don't ever bring it up again. But do bring up Champions of Midgard, which I've only got the chance to play twice, and that's very unfortunate because I think it is a great worker placement game. And you know what? Forget it. I don't own it, but we're going to put it up here. I enjoyed Champions of Midgard that much when I played it. I'm going to bump it all the way here. Because, yeah, like if I'm looking at all these games and someone's like, hey, which one of these games do you want to play? And I say to myself, oh, you got Champions of Midgard? Yeah, I'll play that. I want to play that. And then I said, oh, but you have the Alien Frontiers expansion? Yeah, I'd actually want to play that. You know what? Actually, oh, 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 
don't do, don't, no, did I do this? No, no, don't, don't connect. Don't connect. Stop. No, no. Oh, no, please. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Don't click any buttons. Uh, anywho, back to your regularly scheduled program. We have Robinson Caruso. A game that I actually got as a Christmas present for my wife. And I remember that because she now she doesn't get me any board games because I'm just i overflowing with them. But I was so excited to play this game. And I still think it is one of my favorite uh, worker placement games of all time. But you were Robinson Crusoe. You were stuck on the island and you were trying to get off. And it has this really fascinating mechanism where you do things and then they come back to bite you in the bottom later. It is insanely difficult. And it is one of my favorites, to be honest with you. Unfortunately, the rules are a beast to go through, but I'll put it like this. If I had someone come over to my house and they said, I absolutely love Robinson Crusoe, I play it all the time, I can teach it to you in 10 minutes, I say, yeah, let's do that over over just about every other work placement game. It's so right now. But, Rise of Queensdale, someone says, I got a fresh copy of it, I want you to be one of my people who plays it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll drop everything else. Sorry, Caro, you're out. All right, Florenza. Forgettable good. Straight into the forgettable good. This was such a heavy, heavy, heavy game. It was heavier than King's Abbey, but I do remember liking King's Abbey better. And you know what? I like Biotics better, too. <laughs> Take that! Uh, but this is from some designer who I'm sure if I said the name, a bunch of Dry Euro fans, and I'm a Dry Euro fan, so I'm not saying that. I say that in a loving way. Would say, ooh, that name. Uh, and it was, a really, it was a really good game. It was one of those games that just absolutely set my brain on fire, which doesn't happen to me too terribly often, you know? <laughs> I've played thousands and thousands of games, so... Uh, but, but, but yeah, it was a really beast to get to the table and I ended up getting rid of it, but it still is a good game. And if you like dry, heavy euros, check out Florenza. Chimera Station, not a dry, heavy euro. This was a really interesting one from, uh, Tasty Minstrel Games, who used to sponsor my channel, actually. And this one was so cool because you could customize your workers. And, and you have that in some other games where you have custom workers on your work placement but this one they were actually like and i still have this game because it's so stinking cool they were actually like these little lego type you could pop on different yeah you can look at the picture right there you can actually pop on different body parts to your worker and then they would gain different benefits and i thought it was a really cool mechanism and it's a game that unfortunately uh i've only played three times sparingly you know and that was three times really spread out and i don't I don't know why it doesn't get to the table more, and I would really enjoy to play this one again. But, uh, yeah, I'll put it right above Charterstone. Because if someone comes to me at Charterstone, I'm like, that's that's a pretty big commitment. I don't know if I'm willing to make that commitment. If someone comes to me with Chimera Station, I say, you learn the rules. I'm in, Billy. And they say, don't call me Billy. All right, next we got Embark. There's like three of these games that are going to be very, very similar. So let's do them back to back to back. So there's Embark. There's Harvest, and then there's that other one. Harbor, I do believe, is the name of the game. And I don't see it, so we'll get to it later. But we'll get to Harvest right now. Harvest was, I believe, my favorite of the three. This is one where you actually have a plot of land, and you're planting things. And I remember the, the thing that I really liked about this game, and I still own it. My wife liked it as well, uh, which is awesome, because she doesn't typically like too many games that we play nowadays. We don't play very much. Um, well, I do, but she doesn't I burn her out at me but was this one you plant a bunch of different plants it was really cool and really enjoyable and what i loved about it was it could have other companies would have put it in a much larger box but they didn't they put it in one of their, their boxes that's like this size right here and and it was so much game in that size box and i would really like to revisit that one but not as much as chimera station but yeah that was going above charterstone i'm bagging on charterstone hard yeah, I'm going to bag on it a little bit harder. Right there. Work replacement. Bump it up. I, I really like that game a lot. This is another one. Put an asterisk on it. I've only got a chance to play it twice. And this game needs to be played uh, numerous times because there's a fantastic story. It is holding on the troubled life of Billy Kerr. And this one was from the same people uh, who, who did, like, Rory Story Cubes. 
And this was a worker placement game where you're like in a hospice and you're trying to like communicate and keep this guy alive as like a nurse or something. And you're learning about his story as you play the game. And I played two games of it and I was absolutely gripped. Like quite honestly, this is one of my games that I would like to play more than just about anything. I would play this before I would play Song of Ice and Fire. Does that mean that it goes into my favorites? Because that's really difficult. That's kind of hard to rank because I'm banking this on how excited I am to play it. And in that aspect, it would go all the way to the top. Because I haven't seen what it is. And I think that's unfair. Because I've only played it twice and I haven't played through the whole story. So I am going to bump it down, but it's to the top of the good. Like, if I could play any game in this good category, without a doubt, it's that one right there. And honestly, if I could play any game on the list, it's probably that one right there. But it's not my favorite. I can't put it there. Donning the Purple. It was a really unique, um, it went up to three players. I think it was two or three players. I'm about to run out of water again. Don't do this to me again. Uh, this one was a, a political game set in Rome, and I remember it was very good. I remember I enjoyed it a good deal. And unfortunately, I forgot everything about the game before we made the review of it. So that one needs to get back to the table. But I'm about to put it in the forgettable good. But it was very good. But probably not better than Biotics. And I'm not even memeing. Biotics is great. Obelix. This is a really unique game crafter game. Where I don't remember the exact theme of the game. But the, 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 the thing was you were essentially trying to get... There was, there was like these dice and they were going along a path. And you had to like manipulate the path in order to manipulate the dice. And it was a really stinking cool game. Towards the top of the forgettable good. No, because I feel forgettable good is it's just a negative connotation. Like, I remember enough about this game to put it on the good. And I did, and I'd like to revisit it again. <clears throat> and I think I enjoyed it. Eh, not that much. Right there. Right there. Alright. Kingswood. To the top. To the top. To the top. To the top. This is one of my best children's games of all time. If you have kids between the age of four and eight, I cannot recommend Kingswood enough. It is an absolutely outstanding family game. It is, uh, my son loves playing it solo. But I'm putting this on my list. My favorites. And while I do love the fact my kids enjoy it. Man, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Right there. Right there. I would still rather play Stone Age with my eight-year-old, who's he's about to be. I think he would like it a lot. Plus, he has played my first Stone Age. Both my kids love my first Stone Age, which is not actually a worker placement game, but ugh, if you got kids, get worker, well, get that one. Orleans Invasion, or AKA Orleans. This is a hard one, and this is why ranking legacy games is so difficult. Queensdale is such an experience, whereas Orleans, like if we're just going straight off the game and just what's in the game, Orleans just blows, in my personal opinion, most of these other games out of the water. Orleans with Invasion adds different, unique, really spectacular game modes. The cooperative game mode on Orleans is probably my favorite cooperative game of all time, and I guess we're doing a cooperative game uh, top cooperative games of all time next week because now I kind of want to know. Uh, Orleans is spectacular and it deserves respect and it is my favorite worker placement game. No, I can't do it. Queensdale. Queensdale, sorry. Lost Runes Arnak, the new hotness. Oh my gosh, you're freaking out. It's very, very good. It is very, very good. I don't think it's one of my favorites. We'll put it right here. And I played Lost Runes of Arnak three times three times sorry water and it has worker placement it does a work placement very good it does deck building it does deck building very good it does racing and it does racing very good it does everything very good but i didn't feel like it did anything amazing it's just that everything it did was very good and very unique and very intriguing very interesting but it, it was just a little too by the books. I think this is a game that with an expansion easily gets up into that favorites category. But for now, I'm putting it in the good. But I do think it's a game that I'm going to keep for a very long time. Embark. 
This was my least favorite of the Harbor Embark uh, Harvest 3. And this was a game where you were going to a new island, and you had to, like, explore and mine, and it was forgettable. Meh. But it was much better than Caro. I will say that. I enjoyed the game a good deal. But I didn't have that much fun with it. And if I recall correctly about Embark, the big thing about Embark was that I played it with a kid in my classroom, and she was like, and normally after we get done with the game, they're like, oh yeah, can we play it again? Can we play it again? Can we play it again? I said, okay, okay. This time, she was like, I was like, do you want to play this again? She's like, yeah. I was like, okay. Okay. Fair enough. And I agree. Now, one that was definitely not mad, Feast for Odin. This is immediately my favorites. Played it twice. I've only played it twice, but man, both times left a huge effect. That is that is all me. I love when there is just choices upon choices upon choices upon choices. And Feast for Odin gives me that. And I liked Feast for Odin better than Kingsburg. I did. Can't believe I'm saying that. I feel so dirty. All right. By the way, just want to mention, after this next game, there's going to be a 12-second intermission. So, next we got Liftoff, Get Me Off This Planet. I'm going to fill my water real quick because it's really getting to me. Liftoff, Get Me Off This Planet. This one is from Pencil First Games, LLC, and it is a very good worker placement game. I would say it's a great worker placement game with its new edition of the game. But, it's not one of my favorites. It just didn't do it for me. But that being said, I feel like most people would have it in the very good to great category. And I would rather play it than Mintworks. I'm going to put it right there. Because it is a really cool game. So essentially you have all these cool little alien meeples. And your job is to try and get them to escape off the planet. So they have to venture up. And then they have to try and escape from the planet by getting on these different rockets. And each of the different rockets has different conditions for when it will launch off. Not only with the ingredients... Uh, or with the uh, what's the the fuel or whatever the springs the the parts that you need to get it to launch off, but also by the placement of the moon because the moon is actually going to be going around the board, so it actually has that sort of aspect as well. Uh, and it was really cool, really cool game, Va criminally underrated. Twelve second intermission. All right, all right. I apologize for that. I shouldn't apologize for hydrating, but I will. Nevada City. Full disclaimer. Only played this game once. Very good. It's a very good game. Played it at Origins. Really enjoyed it. But like I said, I went through everything, marked everything that I played. Uh, and I remember you had to, you were essentially starting up a city, and it had really cool mechanisms. This is one that I could easily see moving into my favorites. And in fact, my friend Adam who uh, did the Origins Bonanza with me, I think he would absolutely put it in a great category. He he really, really enjoyed it, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I would love to revisit it, and honestly, I would play it over Liftoff, because I, I want to see more of what that game has in store, whereas I know what Liftoff is. Lois and Clark. Forgotten game. It's very good. I don't know if it's quite my favorites, but it, uh, it treks you as you go across... The, uh, like it's the Oregon Trail, is that what it's called? You were Lois and Clark. I mean, you're Lois and Clark. You're going across your... And what, but what they really did was they really tied the theme to the game. And the game has really cool, fun, interesting mechanisms. It's a great worker placement game. But they really went hard on the theme and, and the cards and the, the story kind of tell you... Well, there's not the story, but they, they tell you about the different characters. And they're actually real characters from life. And that's really cool. And that really gets me excited. But not as excited as mm, this one's a hard one i haven't played this one in like two years i played it like four times over like six months and i really enjoyed it i thought it was very good every time i thought it was very good and then it just didn't get played which means it should go lower right let's go it's going above harvest it's got to go above harvest got to on earth play this twice enjoyed it uh and for brother wise games this is actually my favorite brother wise games uh, because they have, I think, they have Boss Monster, they have this, and they have Call to Adventure, which, God, I hate Call to Adventure. <laughs> I hate that game so much. Uh, Unearth! It was good. It was good. I enjoyed it a good deal. I actually liked it a lot. It was very simple, and how high did I like it? Yeah, I really enjoyed this game. I would like to play this game more. And it, it kind of goes in that Nevada City category, where I played it twice, 
But no, I don't remember it. I played it twice and it's forgettable good. Top of the forgettable good. Because I don't remember it. Forgettable good. There you go. Vinny Culture. This a couple years ago was my favorite worker placement game. Hands down. With the Tuscany expansion, with the more visitors expansion, the more you add into it, the better it gets. And I do believe that it, it is still spectacular. Still one of my favorites. But still playing Robinson Crusoe. Because I just love Robinson Crusoe so much. Gugong! This is such an incredibly unique worker placement game that has all sorts of really cool mechanisms that meld together. And I remember I remember when I shot the review, I was like, oh my gosh, the mechanisms just kind of rolled onto each other. Kind of like how Orleans. Orleans just kind of flows to me. Unfortunately, I don't remember much about those mechanisms. So we're going forgettable good. But I did think it was very good. But not as good as on Earth. I do still own that one. That that one's currently like on the cutting block because I, I used to I used to uh, be sponsored by Tasty Missile Games, so I got a lot of their games, and some of them I'm gonna keep, and some of them I'm not. And I think Gugong might eventually hit the chopping block, unfortunately. Agricola, good, good. It's a cool game. It's a classic. Don't need to talk about it much. I still think it's good. I played it on a tablet a couple a couple months ago, I think. My old tablet. I found it on there, and I was like, oh, cool. I'll play this. And it's still fun. And it's better than Lois and Clark, in my opinion. That being said, Caverna still replaces it. And we will get to Caverna, but not yet. Stone Age. Already did you. Kalis. So Kalis is an interesting subject, because I've never actually played Kalis on the board game. I have played the app version of it probably ten times. And I've enjoyed playing the app version of the game. I thought it was good. That's as high as I'll go. I thought it was good, but I would rather play it. Yeah, I'd rather play it than Agricola because I feel like when I'm playing Agricola, I'm gonna be like, "Man, I wish I was playing Caverna." Whereas when I'm playing Kalis, I'm not gonna be like, "Man, I wish I was playing Caverna." But that being said, I'd still rather play Chimera Station again because those 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 meeples you get, those workers are really cool. Vinhos. I think this is Latal the the Val I I I I, 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 I apologize. He's a very famous game designer. Uh, he's one of those ones that has the gigantic boxes. They're like, they're like this big. Uh, Eagle Griffin Games does them. And I've seen like the line to like get autographed by him. Like People are really excited. Uh, he's one of those game designers. Like the Florenza guy. Unfortunately, I don't remember much about this game. I remember it was good. I remember it was meaty. But I remember saying, yeah, I'd rather play Viticulture. Even though they are very different games, if I recall correctly. <sighs> yeah, forgettable good. Because why didn't it stay in my collection? But then there's a question, which one would I rather play? I'd rather play Diamond Purple. That's where I'd have it. That's where I'd have it. I agree with that. Play Geek. Good game. Very fun. Played it, I think, twice. Enjoyed it both times. My friend Lucy has it. She likes it an awful lot. I like the app a good deal. I know it's probably not the theme for right now, but I still think it's a very good game, and I think it does a great job of uh, really giving you the feel for the app in a really good way. And honestly, wow, how high does this go? Yeah, I'm going to put it there. I enjoyed it that much. It really stuck with me. It made me one of those games where I was like, I would like to own that one day. Islebound. Big, big asterisks on this one. Uh, so I went to Denver, Colorado, where marijuana is legal, and I consumed marijuana way too much. And then I played Islebound, and it was very forgettable and good. <laughs> I will leave it at that. Uh, I was blown out of my mind. So we're going to slot this. Yeah, right there. I'd like to revisit it again. But not as much as the cooperative motion of Red Outpost. Zolkin, the Mayan calendar, into my favorites. And this is one. Yes, and it's going to go up here. Because once again, I've not played the Feast for Odin expansion, and I love Zulkin. I need to reach out to CG. I have not played the Zulkin expansion, and I would absolutely adore to play it. And honestly, no. Still below Robin's Crusoe. Robin's Crusoe is cutting it down, but Zulkin is spectacular. And I think I like Zulkin better than Viticulture now. It's got a Rondell system. If you don't know what a Rondell is, it's really cool. It means there's this big gear in the middle, and this big gear in the middle triggers all these other big gears. And then your workers move around the gears, and then you pull your workers off. Because it's honestly a really simple game. You either... 
put workers on or you pull workers off, and that's the whole game. But it's very, very cool. Big Box Fresco. I played Fresco a lot when I first got into the hobby. Buddy might have had it. Played it five, six times. I thought it was very good. It's a painting game. Theme is meh, here nor there. But he actually had this big box. And there was a lot of really cool game in there. And I think it's a good game. And I'd rather play it than Kalos. But I'd still rather go for Rig Gizit Chimera Station. Caverna. Let's get it out of the way. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. This is where it gets interesting. I like the theme of Caverna better than I like the theme of Feast and Odin. Can I do it? Can I put... Viticulture was... Viticulture was like one of my favorite games of all time at one point. Oh, am I getting rid of it? No. I still think I would rather... Nope, nope. I'm going to go with that. I think I'd rather play Caverna. The Viticulture. I really enjoy Caverna. You build your cave. It's... Uh, it's... It's kind of like a little bit like a Grickle, but with even more choices. And I'm all about that. There's Harbor! Harbor was good! I enjoyed Harbor a good deal! Uh, I'm going to put it in Forgettable Good, though, because I don't really remember much about it. But I know it was good. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I came out years and years ago. I remember liking the components. Played it like two or three times at a game night. And it was good. But Forgettable. Heroes Welcome! Also Forgettable Good, another one from twenty for, uh, Pencil First Games LLC. And I remember enjoying this game. And I remember thinking it was cool. Good deal. You play as like, uh, you're, you're like, you're, you're supplying the heroes with like gear. I remember it had a cool theme. I remember it being good. But I don't remember it. And I know Gugong was a better game, I think. And so was King's Attic. And so was Biotics. You know what? Oh, it's sliding. It's sliding. But it stops here at Vidhos. I think it's where I'm putting it. Alright. Time Barons. This was a cool game. This was a very cool game. This was did not look like a worker placement game. It was actually a, a game crafter game with mostly cards. And I remember it had a cool time travel mechanism. And I remember it being good. I remember screwing up the rules for it in the review video, which was really bad. And uh, I'm going to go with Forgettable Good. Forgettable Good. I think I might actually still own it just because it's a small box game. But towards the bottom of Forgettable Good, I do believe. I'd like to see what was an aisle bound a little bit more. Alright, Energy Empire, Minutes to Midnight. I get these two mixed up. Which one did I enjoy more? I think I enjoyed the Minutes to Midnight one more, and I think it was a very good game, and I would like to get it to the table more. And I will put it right behind Mintworks, but I do think it's a great game. Francis Drake, this is, this is, this is clinging into the favorites. I've played this twice now, and I absolutely loved both times. It takes, you're with a pirate, and you're going around, and you're sailing around, you get all sorts of barrels, and it has really cool components, and it came from Eagle Griffin Games, and they really did a great job on it. And I'd rather play it than Lost Ruins of Arnak. That's how excited I am to get that game back to the table. Alright. Down to the last few. Lords of Waterdeep. This was my worker placement gateway game that got me into the hobby, and I show it respect. It needs the expansion, in my personal opinion. But I still would rather play it over City of the Big Shoulders. Because I, I know it like the back of my hand. Overlords of Infinity. Really cool game. Lots of unique mechanisms in this one. That I don't remember. So we're going forgettable good. And I would rather revisit King's Abbey. And Biotics. Biotics has the short factor in it. No. And I'd rather play Dotting the Purple again. Nations. Oh. Favorites. Favorites, favorites, favorites. And this one's a little bit unfair. I've played it twice. This is one that I don't own. My buddy Jimmy owned it. But due to Corona, I don't get to see him anymore. And he's never going to never gonna see him again. Uh, but this game is so fun. I love Nations. This is one where you you have all these different leaders. And they do different cool stuff. And it's an amazing worker placement game. And I wish I would play it more. And I would rather play it than a lot. Yep, it's going ahead of that. Going ahead of this. Wow, how high is it going? It really tickled my fancy. I'm going to put it right there. Spirium. 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 This is one of the first games I got in the hobby. I remember it being good. But I, this is one I would absolutely love to revisit. And in fact, I'm going to put it towards the top of the forgettable good. Because I would like to see if I still enjoy it. Because this was actually probably in like the top, or the, one of the first 10 or 20 games that I played in the hobby. 
And I would love to go see back if it still stands the test of time because I did enjoy it a good deal. I remember it had really cool neon green components. All right, last one. Manhattan Project, Energy Empire. It's good. It's good. A forgettable good. I don't remember it. I don't remember it. I remember Minutes to Midnight. And I remember some of the... I really like Minutes to Midnight. Energy Empire... It was forgettable for me, but I know it was really good. Like, I know it's good. I feel like it's... Yeah, this is going to the top of forgettable good. Man, I, but I feel bad. Trakirian. Yeah, Trakirian. You're such an odd duck. I, I would honestly put it... I would slot it right around this range, but I'm going to put it in the forgettable good because I don't remember it. But there you go. My number one worker placement game of all time is Rise of Queensdale, the legacy game from Ravensburger. And my least favorite work and placement game of all time, and I'll scroll down through this, is, of course, Ticket to Mars, which sucked. And I don't remember why it sucked, but I know it sucked. <laughs> but there you go. That was my top 64 work and placement games of all time. If you enjoyed this content, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below as I plan on going through every game I've played next week. Hopefully, we will get into the cooperative games, and I will once again, I think I'm going to add a great category. I think I'm going to add a game great category here but let me know of any improvements i can make on this segment in the comments down below and as always thanks for your time youtube